fall. Now, during the summer season of the LEC, when Nikki locked in Tom Kench, we were not the happiest of campers. Let's zoom out and look at what these team compositions are going to do. A number of very long-range engaged tools. Uh, Ash Arrow, TK Ultimate, Pant Ultimate, Obviously, Gallo, Gallio follow it, but not your traditional forms of engage. Yeah, right now, uh, it, it is going to be very different by a few players on each team. We have a lot of skirmishing potential in this game, and this is going to come in whenever you see Grazers and Nidalee jungle, but especially, you know, top lane champs like the Camille. You have a lot of champions that are going to be seeking out fights, and this is something that Mach both of these teams are going to be adapting. It's the second game on stage, second time in the world's group stage, and yeah, I, I really have to bite my tongue because I always make too many big statements too early in the <laughs> tournament, Mr. Fryson. It's very easy to fall into that trap. We're just one game in. I love the skybox Look here. At Take that. over. Fantastic. The skyline on Summoner's Rift as we load up for Mighty Esports versus G2. And like, like I was saying, um, oh, look at this. PK already been caught out so much. Didn't quite see the setup. Has got the flash available to him. Not even going to be able to get away. Instantly taken out. I think we will find out. They just got into the, the lane early. Yeah, I believe what ended up happening there, you have a little bit of a pincer move. If you if you suspect the enemy top laner is camping in that brush, you send two people out of the tri brush and a couple more from the top side of the map there too and find that pick. And level one Tom Kench, of course, can be very powerful. This is the play, just as I was saying right there with Mickey X and Caps rolling through lane. And level one Tom Kench, really, really deadly, has two more come out from underneath. And PK, there's just that pocket of vision. G2 are really, really good at being able to play around with these level one ones and uh, they get that first blood. Well, there we go. And on it's the on board, Wonder. A minute and a half into the game, G2, 500 gold up, very strong starts and just good preparation, you know, really fantastic usage of vision. And Perks and Mickey already trying to just push this wave a little bit. Mickey yeah. standing behind Bruce and Koala. I love this too. He has the Hail of Blade so he can instantly proc his passive and get that stun there for massive chunks onto Koala. Perks continuing to trade as well. So much damage onto Koala and Bruce. No summoner spells traded. While you're oh, analyzing here. the fight, Gemini now makes his way in. Perks is going to take an auto to the face. Exhaust used by Mickey. Going to get some damage from end of the line. The volley will at least push them back. Flash heal and exhaust used for just the heal on Bruce. Yeah, this is a really big gain coming through from Gemini. He realized how aggressively Mickey was going to be trading down in that bottom side. And Yankos, you can see, is not even going to answer with the invade top because he needs to contest down in this bottom side jungle. Otherwise, his bot lane is completely doomed here. He won't necessarily have pressure coming through from his bot side. And he doesn't have a smite either. So this should be Machi favored. Okay, there's already a move there from Koala into the river. As the setup is going on, that was the fastest first blood of Worlds 2020 by 41 seconds. Thank you, LOL Esports stats team, for pinging me that one. Oh, this is so good from Machi. I love this invade. We're going to be able to jump right on top of Yankos. He will flash over the wall. Ignite is burning. Cap starts to back away, but his wave is being pressured into the tower. And very good play. We said we want to see proactive yes. play. We wanted to see the tempo increased, and Machi are delivering. Exactly. Gemini, too, trying to get some revenge against Yankos. You can see now walking straight through mid lane because he knows there's nothing for Yankos to do on the map other than look for this topside Scuttlecrab. So he's going to be able to pick that up, even though Wonder has priority and pressure coming out from the top lane. Mission completely has pushed Caps into the tower. And again, Gemini has smite. Yankos doesn't. And that's a flash forward. Not going to be able to get damage from end of the line. Smoke stream comes up, pounce away from Yankos. Yankos down to 150 HP. Gemini continues to chase. One more dash forward with the quick draw. The shotgun to the face, and Yankos goes down. Now, Caps is in a little bit of trouble, but here comes Wanda. Tactical sweep will slow down Gemini. Precision protocol, the hook shot flash Ooh. connect. Beautiful. Mission, executed. mission, mission almost solo kills Caps in the mid lane, too. He gets the flash and doesn't burn his own right there. Okay, so much to unpack in this early game. First thing first, Gemini is absolutely dancing on Yankos right now. This is why I like to see the Graves get in the enemy jungle here, using his pressure, able to just destroy the Yankos right here. He has the phase rush, too, which helps him out so much. And then Yankos, I don't think you can pop out of your... I'm not sure how long it was on his W before it came up, maybe one or two seconds, but don't think it would be able to get out of that either way. And then watch this flash on the hook shot from Wonder. Really nicely done as Gemini tries to dodge away. So Wonder tries to salvage the play, but Yankos is off to a rough start once again. Such a difficult start. Different yesterday, though. Yesterday, Yankos on a bad invade got punished. Today, 
Gemini, with support from all of Machi, is just stepping on Yankos. Now, keep in mind, G2 are still a thousand gold up at this stage. Two kills in the bank to one. Got themselves a CS advantage in that top lane. Yankos will be able to pick up the Scuttle Crab at last, but I do want to keep my eyes on how Gemini is getting support from Mission, from Koala, from the rest of Machi Esports, because they've been there already in the first five minutes. Yeah, you have to watch the, the lane priority from Mission especially. In mid at level six, I do think this is going to change a lot, because all of a sudden, even if Mission has priority, Caps is going to be able to respond, and Caps with the Predator Boots was also able to pick those up. I really like how Yankos has a returned to attack this map after the first death. Of course, he walked into the top river, had Pryo in both top and mid coming off the play, so was able to take the Scuttle Crab and the Raptors and now the bot side Scuttle Crab too. So the first blood, obviously pretty bad for Yankos, but I think coming out of this play, he's going to be very happy with how it's unfolded and he has all of his camps to return to on the map too. So it's not like he's going to actually be down in CS or EXP against Gemini. That's hugely important for G2 and for Yankos. And do you know what else is very difficult to deal with? A double buff Camille with two kills in the top lane already. We saw PK being pushed all the way under his tower. He's already down 10 CS and starting to recall back. Taking a look at the mini-map, and you can see Yankos was sort of sniffing around, got a ward into the jungle, and then backed away. Yeah. Oh, this ward from Caps is actually really good. Uh, that ward is looking for a top lane dive, I think. Although now that Mordekaiser is level 6, that can be a little bit tough. Maybe a bot side dive, because again, this deep vision, if you see Gemini in the top lane, all of a sudden you say, now we can pull the trigger and look to go down bot lane. Yeah, Gemini is already in the area, though. If, if the bot lane dive does come in, Koala doesn't have a flash available, so could be a potential target. And I want to watch this um, Predator Galio. It's something we saw a couple of times during play-ins. And I wasn't sold from what we saw. Let's take a look Teleport at... behind. No TP from PK, PK either. Exceptional placement earlier. Mission does have Flash available. Gemini's going to be able to walk away for now. And chasing for Javelin Toss doesn't find the target. Hextic Ultimatum does. And G2 literally just walk mission down. Yeah, easy kill right there. PK just uses TP to get into top lane, and Wonder will drop a few minions, but G2 are able to punish the dragon attempt from Machi. That was just uh, a failure of the checklist there from Machi a bit, because the first checklist is, do you have Pryo around the dragon? They did. Mid lane bottling did look good, but do you have the TP mismatch? Is it actually in your favor? Do, are both teleports down? That was not the case, and Wonder comes in for the kill. I mean, two of the three kills that G2 have picked up is just preparation. It was the vision play for first blood, right place, right time, punishing Machi. Second time, as you mentioned, the invade for the ward, and then having the teleport mismatch. The fact that Wonder was able to jump in, that he picks up the assist, Caps picks up the kill. And Perks right now alone in lane as uh, Mickey did back away. He's picked himself up some boots. Small CS discrepancy here as Bruce and Koala a little bit ahead of Perks and Mickey. I do quickly want to address this Tom Kench pick in the bot lane because I think a lot of people are expecting to see more and more Pantheon. Here we go, Mickey jumps that's, on that's in. That's the flash engage. Flash burn from Bruce. Volley will slow him down. Heal as well. Devour comes up. Spit back into the face of Perks. One extra auto to a minion just for style on Perks' side. And we'll have to tank one extra turret shot to get the kill. I love it. Mickey's trying to make my point before I can even make it myself there. With the Hail of Blades, Tom Kench has so much kill threat. I think against the Pantheon could be a really strong matchup as well. Wonder's in some trouble yet. Yeah, if Gemini decides to commit, remember the ultimate has now been thrown down, waiting for it to time. Hextech ultimatum not available for Wonder. He's going to step away. Here comes Yankos. Wonder will go down. It's picked up by Gemini. Yankos will just farm away. Quickly go back to that Mickey point you were talking about. If we see the same level of impact in this game, that Mickey had yesterday on his Bard game, that is a very good sign for G2 because he popped off on his World 2020 debut. Yeah, he was super influential, and that's why I think Gemini visiting bot lane so early on is a really big deal for Machi because this matchup, like, you're trying to look for that level 2 all-in, have a lot of power there, and now Qual is in mid. The Ash Arrow comes out, Mission's able to sidestep that, Perk's not able to find his man. The fact that Koala helps out Mission, they pick up their third kill, Gold is now even. And while Perks got stunned, there's no further follow-up. No mana, no more damage. Yeah, it's a really nice read for Machi. They expect G2 to play through mid lane. Koala is there to try and punish. And now they can try to take this Herald. G2, they know Bruce's bot lane and they want to fight. He's in so much trouble. Dawn Shadow comes out. The Javelin Toss will connect onto Koala. And he's going to go up into the air, drop right back down. Mission is going low. Yankos is looking for the red buff autos. Mission will survive for now. Flash over the wall from Yankos, and Perks is able to finally take down Mission. Now he's running for his life. The shield, the heal, not enough. Gemini takes down Perks, and here comes Wonder for a reply kill in the jungle. Now Koala is the next target, and everybody's in the fight. 
And at the moment, it's G2 winning it. These fights are just complete madness. Again, Machi get off to a good start, but the Herald is going to be denied because it's G2 playing with the global advantage. Bruce is down in the bot lane. His ultimate is helpful, but it's not the same when Caps is able to come back after death and get that ultimate straight into the play. And now Mickey is looking for the solo kill against Bruce. Wow, let's see what he can do. Devout he can solo kill Bruce. Sick, and this is incredible stuff from Mickey. This Tom Kinch is brutal. <laughs> oh my God, they're gonna give the kill perks. The light perks that coming and get the kill. incredible. What? Mickey, you monster. What? He steals it. He's literally trolling. Second. He is literally trolling. What are you doing, Mickey? Unbelievable. The Abyssal Voyage in for the solo <laughs> kill. We have got 13 kills in 10 minutes. But Ender, the thing I'm the most excited by is the question we had was, can Machi handle <laughs> and match G2's tempo? And so far, the answer is yes. Yeah, well, Tom Kent is clearly not a support champion. Here, I think Yanko's really really tries to go hard because he gets his hunted passive on a lot of different targets but isn't quite able to finish off the kill. Perks is going to flash forward to make sure he can finish off mission here. Which I think is less than ideal when Wonder is popping over the wall uh, with his hook shot. So Gemini will end up trading him, but Yank is able to flash over the wall, get all the way around, then Caps comes into the fight. And again, that Senna is stuck in that bottom lane. Well, that replay brought to you by Axe. You may need another one. As all of a sudden, Perks is going to get caught out. This time around, the kill is going to be donated. Perks gets a lot of extra autos onto mission, but it simply won't matter. And G2 late to the party. 50 seconds until the next dragon. And we are just trading kills everywhere all day long. But does it favor a particular squad here? You know, do, is there any in indication you can take going into the mid game with how this is playing out so far? Honestly, I feel like with the, how scrappy these teams are and how skirmish heavy, it's about where is the gold going? Like neither team is getting a massive advantage off it. Like G2 have, you know, 700 gold lead. They have the Infernal as well. But the big deal breaker for them is like Camille in the side lane. How much influence she can have there when pairing up with the Galio. Can Machi realistically match her? And I think Mordekaiser using his ultimate can try to get out of that one versus two situation all right. But Definitely won't be able to keep up, I think, the, especially the later we go into this game when you see items like Death Dance come through from Wonder. That's where things tend to slow down. But because Gemini has these kills on the Graves and doing very well for himself, wherever Machi are trying to make plays, he's usually going to be there. And that is so much burst damage combined with the Cinders. That mid-jungle two versus two, in terms of raw damage output, can almost one-shot anyone on G2. Oh, can they find the skill shots? Can they find the initiation? That's going to be the question we'll need to answer in the next few minutes. Drag Dragon secured here by Machi. G2 unable to get into contest. So one dragon apiece. 1,000 gold separates the teams. And as you mentioned, looking down the items, no real big pickups just yet. Man immune for Bruce is the only real item to speak of. And G2 setting up a little invade. Nikki Yankos cap stepping forward. Gemini is going to be able to quick draw over the wall. Look at the damage, though. Koala's in a little bit of trouble. And that's some of the burst you were talking about, Ender. That's a stun. Root down onto Koala. And he's sent back to the forest. Mickey's going to be able to exhaust mission. Flash over the wall. Caps is going to run for his life. And forced to dash backwards. The Winds of War will not do enough. It ends up being a trade of one for one. Yeah, it's a nice punish right there from Machi. They call the teleport in to make sure they can get the kill. Wonder has his TP. It was just coming up right when that play started off, and he decides to go for the plates in the top side of the map instead. So both teams getting a little bit of what they want, because again, it's Wonder continuing to get ahead while PK can finally bail out his team, who was struggling a couple times without him. I absolutely loved, just after you talked about the burst damage, that we're going to be able to see from this Graves inside the jungle, bouncing at the end of the line off the wall, and you see the damage it does. Gemini and Koala making their way north. I don't think Koala had his um, ultimate available if they wanted to jump on Wonder. Nevertheless, it's just shadowing in case there was any risk to die. It's a pretty fat cooldown at level one yeah. on that Pantheon. Uh, I do like a Gemini's itemization too. He should be going lethality in this game. Look for that huge burst damage. We'll see what he ends up converting into uh, after that because I think when you get an early lead on Graves, go lethality, at least just a rated Dirk, you're going to be able to, to blow the game wide open. and. For the time being, like, G2 aren't going to be able to build tanky stats for a long time. Like, and people talk, I feel like I hear people talk about Galio, like, his tank in the mid lane. But the guy builds full AP. Like, yep. he'll build a Zonia's Hourglass. That's the armor he's going to be rocking as Wonder looks for PK. Yes, Grass. Pepsic ultimates him. Here comes the hero's entrance. So much damage onto PK. Ultimate was on cooldown. And a 3v1. G2 pick up the 10th kill for them in 14 minutes. This should unlock the first tower yep. as well. 
And it looks like Perks and Mickey can also push in that bottom yeah, lane. They're just supposed to move. It's very nicely done because Machi's entire team is on a reset. PK is up top side. G2 cheat the map pressure again. That's what the Galio ultimate is all about. And now, with Machi going the standard lanes, I think G2 just get the mid lane tower. There's just going to be a cinder here, so they end up not fully committing around that area. But I would have actually really liked to see both Camille and Tom Kench and Ash like, collapse on mid lane, look to dive against mission, because the second this Machi bot lane shows, well, then that cinder is completely hung out to dry. They just temper their aggression a little bit. Yeah, they really do. And you can see the turret plates there, six to four. Once you're able to get a number under their belt. But G2 sneakily built up a two and a half K gold lead. Taking a quick look at teleports here. None available for Machi. Wonder sitting with his and the Trinity Force completed. He's going to get pulled in. Here comes Yankos. Wonder, the hook shot over inside the death run. Wonder needs to survive long enough for Yankos to be able to help. And oh. he cannot do it. Mace to the face. PK sends him to the fountain. Yankos decides to back away, as you can see. What? Mission oh. making his way up. The burn may not just do it. Oh, I was like, PK, you just didn't even move. He <laughs> didn't even flinch right there. Lives with just one HP. Yankos is still trying to look for a Shooting fish over barrel. the wall. Fish in a barrel. Oh. Javelin toss. Just short. Or just north of it, I think, actually. Huge uh, shadow. Oh, there we go. Uh, Santa, 29 souls at this point in time. Farming up a storm. And this, this 2K gold deficit, as you talked about, Three kills for Maud, three kills for Gemini. Mordecai's up with the Leandri's Torment already built. We've seen the damage he can do to Wanda in the 1v1, and that Death Realm, enough time to kill Wanda and then get away from Yankos. So maybe the flavor of the side lane for the next few minutes until Wanda can finish another item or two. Yeah, both, both top lane champions have really good tools for like stalling out and keeping you locked down for a long time, while a jungler or mid laner, Troy to roam up and punish. Uh, quick check in. Uh, on this Rift Herald, because we are going to see a fight. Perks is stuck down in bot lane, and he is not actually going to end up running towards the top side of the map. G2 are going to allow him to take the tower and then play for this Ocean Drake, which I feel is a pretty good answer here. I don't like playing for second Rift Herald uh, once turret plates have already fallen down. I think it's mainly just good for blasting that middle lane tower and getting yourself some pressure leading into a dragon, which is what I think Mach are going to try to use uh, right after getting super deep vision in the top side jungle. Yeah, pushing in that mid lane very heavily. Mickey is coming in from behind, though. Gets a tongue lash onto Bruce. There's no real follow-up. There's a two man stack in the top lane as much he could be setting up a dive onto wonder who is flashless the tower will fall in both the middle and bottom lane mickey will not find the skill shots and i keep glancing at that mini map because machi back away from the top lane the problem for g2 is fighting for mid uh mid lane uh, the wave right here is without Ash in the area, they don't really have great ranged wave clear. Uh, Caps' Q does a lot, but in order to like blast the whole wave, he's going to need to get in there with his passive auto attack, maybe an E as well. Doesn't end up mattering, because again, Machi were focused so much on the top side of the map that they may end up just giving away this Ocean Drake, play for the top lane tower themselves, get some more gold back, because uh, if you actually check out the itemization they are going for, Bruce is building his way towards a Black Cleaver, and with double lethality users on his team, shredding the armor to make that even more effective so they're doing basically true damage is going to be really, really nuts for that first damage again we were talking about. A they lot have. of very squishy champions on G2's side. So execution in these team fights is going to be crucial. It is an advantage for G2, but there's still two Ocean Drakes away from Sol. And you can see the rotation coming in here underneath Wanda. He's going to try to defend this tower, but if he sticks around, he is at risk of being jumped on by a Starfall. But look at this. G2 are still pushing with their bot lane, and Wonder is really hard to lock down uh, unless PK is able to get his ultimate off. So I think Yankos is now going to be able to counter invade, steal away that red buff on the bottom side of the map. G2 are basing for the time being. This is something that was very classic G2, I feel like, a lot in 2019, is there would be situations in which especially Perks could keep pushing for, you know, either plates in the bot lane or turrets or things like this, but uh, the way Perks thinks about the game is not about getting the towers, it's about getting gold, uh, getting experience too, so he would much rather base, get back onto the map so that G2 can be the first ones to attack, and that is what they're going to do to reclaim vision around the top side. It has felt like G2 is just one step ahead of Machi, but it's not a very big step. See, I don't know, because it has been fairly back and forth at certain times. I would agree G2 have been uh, in the driver's seat, but I think now we're at a point where after Machi made some good plays around PK, now they're just sort of trading sides of the map. And the fact uh, two towers down a piece and going to be contesting that mid tower right now in terms of G2 pushing into Machi, now we really get to see who, who can read the map, who's going to have superior vision, and where they're going to prioritize their side lanes. Um, right now, G2 making their way down bottom. Not a lot of vision for Machi to work with. Bruce will back away. He's been 
a little aggressive in his uh, pressuring of the lanes a little bit this game. But he will back away early enough this time around, not get caught up by the swarm of G2 Good one, members. Caps. There's a wall right there. <laughs> He's completely face planted. A little bit, a little bit unfortunate for him. Uh, I am curious how G2 can continue to play through this Camille because I feel like for a while now they haven't really been playing through Wonder as much as they've been playing, you know, around getting pressure in certain areas of the map. And now that he's hit two items with the Ravenous Hydra, like, his side lane pressure is going to be really, really big. When you have a Tom Kench, they can bring him and a buddy into a lane. You have a Galio that can show up too. Like, G2 had the ability to instantly teleport around the map and be in places that Machi just don't expect them to be. Let's see if, uh, if they can set up for it. Right now, looking like they want to pick. Um, Caps has teleport available. Hero's Entrance is available as well. And instead, they're just going to clear the wave out. So, ushering this side lane in. G2 very clearly comfortable with the pace of the game, yeah. very comfortable just playing the trading farm game. And when we see who is going to side lanes for G2, it's going to tell us how they want to like approach the next 30 seconds to a minute, because when Galio is in the side lane and Camille is grouping with the team, well, Camille is the strongest member on G2 at this point, so that means they want to fight, and they want to fight around this Camille. That's why she's with the team. Galio can get to the team fight quicker with his ultimate than Camille would with the teleport. But if Camille's in the side lane, then they're going to be a little bit more uh, cautious, I think, around, you know, playing. Like, even though Camille could teleport into the fight. Because of the delay on it, I think they would rather see if Camille can find the 1v1. Maybe we teleport Tom Kench over to that lane. We don't necessarily have to play for the fight as much as we play for the side lane for a tower or a pick. And I'm adding two and two together here, and uh, you've reminded me of the burst damage on the side of Machi. The longer you take to get into a fight, the less likelihood you'll have teammates to fight alongside. Sure. If the spells can connect, of course. Ooh, arrow. Ash arrow, hopeful. Swing and a miss. Uh, optimistic, I think. Yeah. Um, earlier. I uh, think in the LEC we call that Crowny's Comet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Crowny's Comet still, uh, what's it, orbiting some yeah. of the Eventually it will come back again when it right. completes its cycle. A minute and 10 seconds to Dragon. The first uh, Dragon play that Machi went for, they got punished because they didn't follow the steps. So let's look at the state of the map right now. Machi a little bit better defensive vision. Well, Jeff Perks is just vibing in the top lane, killing Krugs. This is what I was talking about. Perks just will farm jungle camps in order to get a lead, and he's already up 20 CS. Does have two items coming into this fight. Black Cleaver also finished on Bruce. So again, if he has time to apply that, he gets to apply two stacks of every auto. It's kind of kind of nutty on the Senna with the passive there, but he will make it so that Gemini does so much damage with his Yomus already. Gemini is currently waiting for someone from G2. Caps, by the way, north, top lane, pushing it in. And again, Wonder is with the team, Caps is in side lane, so that means G2 are looking to fight. Okay, there's the Javelin Toss, connects onto Koala. Still 30 seconds to Dragon, so G2 able to push both the top and the bottom wave. You can see PK going to catch bottom, and it looks like G2 now setting up for the mid lane. And while there is poke on both sides, especially with the, the Nidalee for me, because there's also healing on both sides with the Senna and the Nidalee E, so it's hard to make this poke stick, but the mana could be a problem as Bruce is down under 50%. Here comes Caps. He's going to base, so it's post 20 minutes. Uh, he's going to have Tome Guards coming out of the base with a teleport. Sharrow onto Koala. Sunglash connects, Scatter the Weak does not stun anyone. Another swing and a miss. Yeah, so Caps actually canceled the reset because he thought he maybe needs to pop an ultimate right there. He's taking away the enemy wolves, I believe. Here we go. Initiation from Koala. Mickey's going to exhaust mission. Root connects down onto Yankos. Here comes Wanda. Hextech ultimates him and instantly deletes Gemini. Now the taunt will land onto PK, but he's locked inside the realm of death with Caps. Machi stepping forward with five members of G2 Esports still willing to turn it back around. PK goes golden, survives a few seconds longer, and despite the stun, it will not be enough. Here comes Yankos, pouncing into the fight, goes golden to avoid the unleashed power. And Mission's now going to escape, gets tagged by the volley, flash over the wall. Taunt comes down from Captain, he seals the deal. Bruce will be the last to fall. G2 ace much. Oh, G2 are so good at team fighting. It is so clean right there with Wonder coming over the wall. Perks' aggression flashing over. G2, they were pretending like they cared about the Dragon, but they're going for the Baron. They were beautifully played team fight. Everybody landing what they needed to do. Baron will be secured here uncontested until 10 seconds before PK can even get up. There's no ward to TP2. And Ender, you called it. You said it several minutes before. And the Caps are going to be in that side and they're looking to fight. They found the fight, but it was just beautiful execution. I mean, it's it's the Camille Galio combo at the start, right? Which just gives Camille uh, the tankiness of the magic damage shield uh, as well as her passive, too, and that wombo combo. 
and instantly finding out Gemini was massive. He got out to a huge lead. He had the items to have insane damage if he was able to find his targets, but he gets deleted. Mission's ultimate gets countered by the press of a single button with the stopwatch. Exactly. And that's uh, just really unfortunate as Koala was the one that hopped into the fight. But again, Wonder underneath able to find out Gemini. Then the ultimate comes down, which also knocks up PK. So the front line is zoned away. Then he's like, I guess I'm ulting the Galio. I'm sort of stuck here at this point. But Galio with a couple of items is a little bit too tanky for him to deal with right off the bat. So the second he pops out, it's Wonder again coming in. And then it's Yankos popping forward using the stopwatch. And I really like Perch flashing over the wall here too to find out mission. Look at that! Yes, exactly. Goes <laughs> for the chase. Caps follows with a flash of his own. Fight on multiple fronts to close it out. I, I, coming into this game, I was hesitant to believe Machi would be able to throw down with G2 and Skirmish. They did for 20-odd minutes, and they did relatively well. I'm impressed by that. But I'm also impressed by how G2 were able to slow down the pace of the game, and it felt to me like they had control of the side lanes for such a long period until they curated the team fight that gave them the Baron. Yeah, exactly. Just wait until Wonder can get into a really good position on the flank. And now, with the Baron buff, sieging is oh so easy. It is two Drakes apiece, but Yankos on this is going to be able to easily push on forward here. They're playing two lanes at the time being, with a third opening up as Wonder walks to the bot side. And Machi are going to try to force. Going to look for the pick onto Mickey. He's still got no summons available to him. Grey Health does so much work as the Dawning Shadow comes out, and Bruce is left for dead. There's no follow-up. One, two, three. Whoa. Oh. The caps, the follow-up damage. Here comes Wonder. Hextech ultimate can lock someone inside the baby cage. He's going to look for PK, waiting to come outside the realm of death. And Mickey will get blown up by the unleashed power. PK looking for Yankos and finds him with this grasp. Gigantic shutdown. And PK just waltzes right out of there. It's a tale of forcing fights a little bit too hard. First, it's Machi diving in. Bruce falls. Then it's G2. Cap sees his moment. He sees the big stun underneath the tower. But Machi have that added protection. able to turn it around. Around and Machi with a bunch of kills. Wonder. Wonder oh, hunting. Did I see, by the way, did PK pick up a 900 gold kill? I, I saw 900 gold come down, yeah. That, I mean, it was a gigantic bounty. Yankos was 5 1 and 8. And now Wonder is just flirting with Mission and Koala inside the jungle, threatening and engage, but there's no backup. He will fall out. So G2 going to slow, be forced to slow down, losing multiple Baron Bounds. Yeah, so Bruce sees the route he gets onto first. He's like, guys, we're winning. Oh, no, that's a Galio. Can't really get out of that one on the Senna. But then I think PK gets that double scoop back on the Yankos. The Yankos then gets follow-up stun. So those two players sort of out of this fight. Popping out of the realm of death, I believe PK was able to finish off yet another one onto, actually, it was just the 1v1 with him on Yankos, and 900 gold. Unbelievable. They're still down 5,000, though. Machi Esports, of course. Um, and now we need to see can they do this again? I mean, the odds are stacked against them. They're down in terms of sort of control, and G2 caught a little bit by surprise, it felt that time around. And this uh, Mordekaiser, the Rylai's Hourglass, Leandris, you cannot disregard the damage that he has. And Pique has played relatively well in these team fights, singling out individuals that he can kill. Yeah, there's. I mean, he, he wins a lot of the 1v1s he's, he's going to end up taking here. You see Yankos in the Realm of Death really, really struggling there. Yankos doesn't want to commit onto high HP targets. If he's going to have burst damage, it's going to be onto a mission or a Gemini in this fight. Now, G2 need to be a little bit careful not to get forced on because, again, Wonder's in a side lane without teleport, so Caps needs to get out of dodge on this one. I would like to see G2 calm down a little bit with the Baron buff instead of looking to force that fight. Let's make sure Wonder can go into a side lane and start hitting towers because he should be able to do that. Yeah, let's see um, Wonder in the top lane pushing in. He just hit level 16. So is PK. Caps close behind. Yeah, this is where the concern does come in because the last time, the last fight we saw was because G2 were trying to play all three lanes, you know, the 1-3-1. One, one which is fairly typical, and Cap does have his ultimate, and Wonder couldn't get onto a flank relatively quickly, but this is a lot better. No one answering in topside, and Wonder should be able to hit tower, and as soon as you see PK and anyone else roam over, it takes so much pressure off of the rest of the team as they can walk into the jungle and take red. I'm gonna set up the vision as well, 40 seconds until Dragon, so next objective to contest. A lot of chip damage on the top inner tower. Uh, looks like G2 should be able to pick up the bottom tower as Machi I feel like they're recalling to set up or challenge for the dragon, would be my guess. Concede the tower. 
and maybe be ready to fight, but it's going to be difficult. They're still down a significant amount. So. Yeah, well, I think it's going to be hard to fight back through their own jungle. You know, Mickey was the only one who reset right there. So if you see Yankos and you're hitting, getting hit by abilities from perks over the wall, you're probably not going to want to force your way in. But bringing five into the area now, maybe they do. Going to just as punch away. Caps needs to flash. Can he get out alive? The Hourglass will buy some time. The Javelin Toss will tag Gemini, and that's going to be a defensive move from Caps. He escapes with his life for now. But a number of ultimates used from G2. That's a lot of damage onto Koala. The Javelin Toss size him. Wonder goes over the wall. He's found mission. He's going to be able to blow him up with the help of that Hexic ultimatum. And now Bruce is going to be able to save his life thanks to the root on Wonder. And Yankos again, the target of PK. Flash over the wall, followed by PK. Hourglass comes up, and Yankos survives round two. G2 beat Machi inside their jungle. Machi were trying to push in. They wanted to contest the Drake play for the ocean. Soul, G2 shut the door in their face. They're going to pick up the dragon and keep pushing for this mid lane. This is the third dragon secured for G2 at 30 minutes. One away from that soul. And it's just a really calculated win so far. The last 10 minutes has been all about keeping Machi at arm's length and only allowing them to fight or committing to the fight when G2 feel ready. A lot of damage onto Koala as the inhibitor turret is about to fall. Baron is alive as well, and G2 again coordinated. Wonder's gonna step forward, the precision protocol, the javelin toss. Gemini survives a few seconds longer. Koala is gonna jump right back into the fight. Big stun onto Perks, no follow up though. No ultimate available for missions, so we can take him out. Yeah, no inhibitors either. Mid lane's already down. Dabaling getting low, but the teleport flank comes through. All right, PK is gonna have some oh. from Koala. Koala and Yankos going toe to toe. PK is looking for the realm of death. It's on cooldown, it's not available. Ash Arrow will tag up mission, and that's gonna allow G2 time to escape. Smoke screen will obfuscate any initiation tools. Death Cross comes out. Caps goes in, goes back out. PK's finally jumped in with the realm of death. He's looking for Caps, who's locked inside the realm, and Hourglass won't keep him alive. Now PK buys some additional time, and G2 backing out. That's a double kill for PK. But G2 did get the inhibitor, and it might not be done yet. Mickey will be the next target. He will be blown up. It will be Bruce that sends him packing. Can Machi actually force the Baron off of this? I think they almost have to if they want to keep this game from going in G2's favor. If G2 were able to get back on the map, the Baron would be oh too easy. So Machi, after winning the fight, are going to rush over here. There's only two players alive from G2, and I don't think they can fight for it. No, they don't. No flash available for Wonder. No ultimate just yet. 20 seconds for Caps, who does have teleport available. And 20 for Mickey now, who's got the Abyssal Void. It'll be dead. They'll be here it's yeah, simply too late. Maybe Perks can get a volley off in time if he commits, but he's not going to. Machi right back in it. Yeah, huge team fight right there for Machi. I mean, this game was looking all but over, but PK on the flank again showing up in these fights, helping his team claw back and win some key five versus fives. They get the Baron on top, so it is this double flank. Koala is able to jump on top of the teleport there from PK as well. And I mean, he finds out Yankos right off the bat, I do believe, gets a lot of these scoops that's able to uh, pull uh, G2 back into the rest of the team. And here, Caps gets immediately ulted, also knocked back by the Syndra. So the zone control of the Syndra in that tight corridor, really, really insane too. And then the Zonias on top of the healing makes so that G2 can't actually trade back through Machi. And those mana bars, way too low. No way that G2 can stick around in this fight. No, they absolutely cannot. The Obliterate doing so much work there for PK, hitting multiple members multiple times. This Mordecai is a 6-4-4. Four, and four. G2 will sneak away in a turret in the top lane. That's the eighth of the game that they've picked up, but still two minutes on Baron for Machi. Yeah, the play for G2 now is against the Baron. Really hard to siege into Machi, but Try to allow Wonder to dance on them just a little bit, because I still think Wonder and Sidelane are very, very hard to match for Machi. So if Machi were able to, we're going to commit, you know, a bunch of people towards the top lane to try and clear out those waves. There's always going to be the threat of Wonder popping into your base. We are slowing down just a little bit because of this Baron, and this Baron will take Machi all the way up until the Ocean Soul spawns, which will be the final line in the sand for Machi. I mean, that could be a game-defining team fight which is scary if you're a G2 fan. They've had such good control, but two blunders, two team fights, one mid, one bottom, allowed Machi back in the game. And I am gonna go back to something you just mentioned, like Wanda could TP into the, the base, but like with Galio, with Camille, with Top Catch, there's a lot of backdoor tools, and G2 have a proficiency for backdoor. And again, who's in the side lane tells us how G2 wants to play the game. With Camille in the top lane. Yep. She's playing for the tower. They're not trying to force a fight off that. She's not trying to teleport in on a flank and do any of that 
you know, business. No, G2 slowing things down. They're just going to wait until the ocean spawns. And then maybe around the ocean, we see them mix up their game plan just a little bit. I'm so excited for March. Yesterday, taking down Team Liquid. Today, going very competitive with G2, making G2 work for it. 50 seconds to the next dragon. It's uh, the ocean soul for G2, soul point for Machi. This Baron has just been a little bit of an equalizer. It's still a 7,000 gold deficit, but it's less and less meaningful the later we go in the game. Yeah, it is possible now with, ooh, a lot of players from Machi coming up for Wonder. They want to find him, but it's really hard to lock him down. That's one of the benefits of having him in the sideline. Yeah, we talked about initiation in yesterday's uh, Machi versus TL game and how PK was on the yawn, that's definitely one of the stronger tools, but in terms of initiation, Machi like it when G2 come to them. Yeah, and I think finally we actually want to see Wonder go into a side lane, even when there is a potential fight about to break out around an Ocean Drake. If they can pull PK away from the rest of the team, even though PK's teleport is up, that's a win. He has been so influential at finding individuals in G2's team, and he is the front line for the squad too, so even though he has teleport, if he's TPing in late to a fight, it's a win for G2. Four versus four in the river, backing away. A number of pings available here. Yeah, onto one as he stepped into the fog of war. Ocean Soul picked up uncontested. Machi cannot respond quickly enough, cannot step into the darkness at risk of being jumped on. Exactly, because they don't have PK there. Yes. If PK walks in, face checks into brush, well, what's the worst that happens? He sees five people and he pops his ultimate. He can buy some time and maybe his team can work in the four versus four, but. Ocean goes down way too quickly for G2 to be able, or for Machi to be able to actually enter in there without him. So I think that was a really good adaptation from G2. And uh, the team fights were already, I feel, favored in G2. Even though Machi bounced back, I think a lot of their fights were off of G2 overstepping, overstaying yeah. on the map. And the Ocean is going to make it really hard for them. It really feels like the experience difference is visible this game where you can see how G2 are playing the game out, but then the the younger, less experienced, hungry players from Archie, when they see that opportunity to punish a mistake in a team fight, they've executed it, but they are down the Ocean Soul. They are down a significant amount of gold, and they have managed to find themselves a catch yet. A lot of damage going down, and Wonder will get pulled backwards. He is popped and he is killed. I not quite see how he was caught out there. Flash from Koala, probably. Yeah, I mean, PK was able to find him out there with the ultimate, which buys time for the rest of the team to get in there, and all of a sudden, everything slows down yes. again. It should be really hard for one to be able to get picked off here on the Camille. He is so incredibly mobile on that champion, especially in mid lane. Very, very surprising Machi was able to make that work, but Bruce pops in, Koala in the fog form. Wonder just doesn't respect the, uh, what, what do they call him, the, the little ghost, the race? The yes, race. the race. That's the one. Ghouls are, ghouls are more, or, York, uh, York. yes, you will remember me, <laughs> Mori. Um, that's actually very interesting, though, this game, that Machi keep finding threads to hold on to. I do want to ask a question based on yesterday's performances from the individual players, from the teams. It feels to me like G2 are a little bit cleaner, a little bit more buttoned up from yesterday, also acknowledging Machi not necessarily the same strength of opponents as Suning. Uh, you know what? I, I'm not sure if I would say G2 okay. are as buttoned up. I think there have been some things like the overextending in the bottom lane, diving that mid lane tower. Like, I still see some of the glimmers of the G2 that's like, oh, we can do whatever we want, right? And we can just jump on you. We're going to win every single fight that we take. And that is not necessarily the case for them. If you look for the arrow. All right, PK is going to get stunned, and there's not going to be any further follow. Berks is just firing those enchanted crystal arrows, looking for opportunities. Just run it down mid, take two inhibs. Mid control here to G2. PK steps forward, Koala takes a big chunk of damage from the javelin toss. Realm of Death not available just yet, flashing over PK. He's dead, he's done, that's the front line from Machi obliterated. Woo! Mission will be taken out by Caps, instantly following onto Bruce now. Gemini and Koala running for their lives. What does your star sign say? It will not be a good day today. G2 run down Koala for the last 50 second death timers with an exposed inhibitor. That will be the game. Caps teleports backwards to get the final kill, then ults back into Wander. G2 find the fight. They head off Machi inside of their own jungle. Right as we say, things were taking a little long for them to close out. G2 said, we heard you, you were, were you talking about us. We're going to end the game right now. <laughs> we heard the casters talking smack. So they just finish it out. 24 kills to 15. G2 Esports take down Machi and remain undefeated in day three of Worlds. This relief and happiness on Yankos' face there. That's, that's when you try type better jungle wins in chat after you get solo killed by the enemy jungler at level four.
PK was so badly trying to 1v9 the game. And he had so many standout moments. But the rest of G2, they just played the team fights mostly, mostly better. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there was... Uh, there